The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, um, good afternoon, folks. Um, I posted the chart for um, Amazon um, this morning, and so you could take a look at it uh, because it's, it looks bearish to me, both of the, the, the three biggest stocks in the NASDAQ, um, Google, Amazon, and Apple look extremely bearish to me. I'm going to go over the Apple chart a little later because I'm getting some heat from uh, people that are asking me, so how can that thing possibly go down? And uh, that's the main thing. But I wanted to go over the, to see what what I did wrong with my analysis of the uh, what happened in the market because, you know, we were expecting the new moon on the 16th to make a nice bottom, but unfortunately uh, it didn't um, – you know, it made a bottom beautifully, and it went up into the full moon. And, and I that day of the full moon, it was only one day down, and that's very unusual. And uh, that continued on up, and it still looked okay up until Monday, uh, and, except on Tuesday. That's when it uh, all came apart because, you know, it had one more jab up, and the Dow is almost uh, at the 786 retracement. But the NASDAQ is not even moving at all. It's basically, uh, you know, not even at a 50% retracement of that move. We're, we're above that 61% uh, retracement in the S&P and also in the Dow Jones, but the, um, you know, the NASDAQ is, is just acting very, very poorly. I have a hard time believing that, that we will have a big bull market here without these tech stocks, you know, chiming in because they've been leading the way, you know, all the way up. And so um, I'm still rel relatively bearish. The scenario that I thought, you know, for a potential of a 1987 replay, uh, that did not happen. We had three of the four things that I needed, but the market didn't go down. That was the fourth thing, which is the important thing. So, you know, I'll be looking to, um, you know, go short personally tomorrow um, because that's the, uh, the new moon, and I want to be ready for, uh, ready for that. I'm up at levels. The uh, market doesn't look bullish to me. Um, if you look at the uh, VIX index, and we're, we'll cover that in just a little bit, and also the utility index and the transportation, they all look very bad, in my opinion. Uh, this does not look like a you know new high move coming, but you know it could be wrong. But that's uh, that's what we're that's what we're looking at. And in particularly, uh, the price of Apple is uh, looks uh, very very bad. It's uh, it's really something that. Uh, uh, you, you don't see a chart that looks this negative when you look at the rest of the market, you know, very often. And I'm going to put this into, uh, you know, the Tiger TV so you can take a look at it because uh, this stock is just not able to rally. It can't get out of its own way. And this uh, is very suggestive of a market that really wants to just really come down. Uh, the price objective on Apple, if, uh, if this scenario unfolds, is at 394. Um, that would be back to where it was in January of this year. And um, the reason why I say that is is that because when we made this big ABCD pattern uh, from September to November, the rally back stopped uh, right at the 382 level, and that means that, you know, that ABCD leg measures down to the 394 level. And the other thing is, is you have to ask yourself, if you're long this stock, you know, why doesn't it go up? When the rest of the market is going up, you know, Apple pulled the rest of the market up for a year, and uh, now it's not doing anything, and uh, it's, something is wrong. And uh, we, we've, t we've talked about this before, you know, that we don't know what's out there because they don't tell us what's going to happen, but price tells us this. We are having more sellers than buyers coming into this stock all the time now, and no matter what the news is on Apple, it's, uh, it's really a quite uh, – you know, this doesn't doesn't rally. I happened to be in the um, Cherry Hills Mall in New Jersey uh, on Sunday, and uh, they have an Apple store there, and it was absolutely mobbed. I mean, you literally had to have a waiting ticket to get in because there were so many people, uh, you know, there. And um, I didn't see many packages, but there were a lot of people in the store. But uh, the uh, price of the stock is not acting like it wants to uh, – 
wants to go higher. That's all I'm saying. Um, and if we go below $500, uh, we're $38 away from there, that would break the D point of that last big swing, and that means we would be heading down, you know, a, a far, far um, a lower, in, in my opinion. I don't think that would be any question at all that we would do that. So all we need for Apple to do is to go below $500, and we'd be looking at 394 is what I would be uh, expecting if it does that. Now, I want to uh, go over the E-mini S&P here because uh, it was very important what happened here. Um, during the whole scenario of the uh, move in the uh, lunar cycles between the two, the two eclipses, because this is where I, I failed to... Um, uh, failed to spot this, and it was uh, I didn't see it till much later, but it was something that, that was important. I'm going to put it into the uh, uh, Tiger Den now and give you a uh, little uh, preview of what uh, what I missed, and uh, then we will take a look at it uh, from that point. Um, the um, okay the um, thing that I'm watching here is the fact that on the uh, day of the full moon, the market backed off uh, down to that um, 385 level, uh, 13, excuse me, 1385 level, and that was the uh, exact 382 of the low from the solar eclipse. And, uh, you know, that's very unusual because usually it will have at least two or three days of a down move in that, but it didn't do it this time, and we've gone up, and now we've, we came within just a, a heartbeat of the 786 retracement of 13, at 1440, and uh, we've been to 1436, so we're very, very close to what I think is another level, but, you know, like, like I say, these levels can be, uh, you know, um, damaging if you're not uh, using stops and, and not, uh, you know, protecting your capital, because that's what you really have to do. The um, the main thing is is that you know that markets are often uh, or men, men are are, are <laughs> I'll, I'm trying to give a quote from uh, Roy Longstreet. Markets are often mar let me get this correct. Men are often wrong. Markets are seldom wrong. So let the market tell you where the market's going to go. If we get above 1447 in the S and P, that's only 17 points away. You know, we could easily make new, um, you know, get get above the highs of 1470 that we made back in September. And that would set up a target, you know, well above 1510 in the S&P, just looking at the larger AB equals CD pattern. So we have to be uh, protective of this if, if, I'm, if I'm wrong in my analysis. I really thought on Monday that we had a chance for this thing to, uh, to roll over because the Russell Index and the and the other uh, indices that I look at have not violated anything, but as of Tuesday morning, you know, everything, everything, you know, turned around and, uh, you know, it went up to make the next level, except the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ didn't even budge. They didn't even take out the highs of the previous week at December 3rd. So um, this is uh, another, you know, thing that you have to you know, keep in mind that why the NASDAQ stocks are so, uh, and, and when, you, when you look at the NASDAQ stocks, these are 100 big stocks, and, um, you know, that, that tells you that something's not right in Camelot, in my opinion, because uh, there should be some more buying. Now, the other alternative here is that if, if this market is really getting ready to break out, we might not get, uh, you know, Apple to, uh, to drop, and that would be a good, then I would think if uh, the market breaks out to the upside, you uh, you know you might be able to take a look at Apple on a low risk buy or maybe buy a call you know a three uh, five seventy call something like that and uh, it wouldn't cost very much and if it's right it'll it'll move you know a lot higher but I don't think that's going to happen and if it does you know we'll talk about it and you know I'll, I'll try to get a better recommendation of uh, than what I did on the SDS the SDS just didn't work and um, you know that's uh, one of those things um, the um, Okay, we want to get on to the next one here. I want to uh, get the next uh, chart that we want to talk about is the Dow Jones Utilities because this stock uh, indices is really, uh, really looking extremely uh, vulnerable here. Uh, we have had only a uh, 382 retracement on the uh, utility index, uh, and that, that is a, an indication of something that is uh, very, very bearish. 
and that's why we want to uh, you know keep an eye on this because uh, this thing is just not able to get out of its own way. Um, it, it's only made a 382 retracement off of its October lows, and uh, this has been a very uh, harmonic uh, indices to look at. You know, it made a beautiful three drive to a top pattern back in July. And then it uh, came down and made a 1.27 expansion of the low in April, exactly to the tick. And uh, then we rallied up to 382. And, you know, here again, we have not taken out the highs from December 3rd. Uh, so it's only been a few of the indices, the Dow Jones and the S&P, that, that, that have been able to, to do that. So usually when the market's in tune, you know, all these will, will work together. But unfortunately, it doesn't always, uh, you know, work that way when you're when you're uh, looking at these things because they don't always, uh, you know, come together uh, the way you want them to at uh, you know the exact time. Time is the most difficult thing in the markets. Uh, you know, Gann spent uh, W. D. Gann spent his life, you know, working on time. I've spent most of my life working on time. You know, only you know, I use astrology too, and it, it works some of the time, but it doesn't work all the time. That's the that's the that's the the tough part of it is uh, it just doesn't work all the time. Okay, now we want to take a look now at the um, VIX index because I think this is uh, holding up in incredibly well given all the uh, you know the market jubilance that we're having here. And I haven't been following the news lately, uh, which I never do anyway. But uh, this frank uh, frankly makes me wonder why uh, you know we're we're as much as uh, we are. I know the Fed's acting today, and, uh, you know, we have a beautiful Gartley pattern in the, uh, in the bond market. I'll do this with the, uh, um, with the VIX index, and then we have a break coming up after that, and then we'll, we'll cover the bond index uh, after we do this. Uh, not the bond index, the VIX index. And uh, it is held up extremely well during this time. Uh, you know, we're down to the 786 retracement of the low we made way back on the solar eclipse. The market is not going anywhere. The ranges are just getting smaller and smaller. And b believe me, that's not a that's not a bearish sign for the VIX index because the people are not expecting uh, volatility incre to increase, and that's when it usually happens. So, uh, you know, personally, we're looking at this. <coughs> we're, we're looking at this for a, a longer term play, and. Uh, you know, I'm not going to make a recommendation in this because it's very difficult for most people to trade, but this looks like a really good, you know, opportunity here in the VIX index because it's a narrow ranges that we're having with the market going up is not a not a good sign, in in my opinion, because of the fact that there's just no uh, no fear out there. No one has any, uh, you know, just a lot of complacency that is there. So that is, uh, that's what we're looking at here. Now, um, I believe that uh, we, we're almost ready for break time. And, oh, yeah, there we go. We'll be back in just a minute. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable... information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are the bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. 
market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at direct.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Happy holidays from TFNN. Our most rewarding Tiger Dollar sale is back this December at TFNN. Normally we offer only a 10 to 20% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases, but through December 19th only, when you purchase Tiger Dollars to spend on any of our products, you get a 25% bonus on your purchase and up to 10% of whatever you spend will be donated to the Salvation Army in your name. You'll receive a personalized thank you letter directly from our local Clearwater Salvation Army Administrator in appreciation of your donation. Tiger Dollars can be used on any of our newsletters or subscriptions, never expire, and are fully transferable. Take advantage of our most rewarding Tiger Dollars sale of the year right now. Visit TFNN.com for all the details and to make your purchase today. Happy Holidays from TFNN. What type of investor are you? conservative, moderate, or aggressive. No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we have a call from um, Lou. Are you there, Lou? I'm here. Okay, uh, hello, hello, um, what, what uh, is your question? Uh, when to shot the IWM? Uh, well, it's probably today. And mm -hmm. the, reason, the reason why I say that is that, you know, looking at the NASDAQ and the fact that we're coming into this lunar cycle, but the last lunar cycle only lasted, you know, one day. Whether that's going to have an effect or not, you know, I'm not sure. But we've completed some major ABCD patterns in the major markets. And the NASDAQ is, is uh, you know, lagging very, very badly, so I don't think this will help the Russell either. You're, it's really simple here because you don't have to risk more than uh, about a point and a half. Uh, your stop would be about uh, 85 10 uh, at this point. That would be a dollar sixty risk at this point uh, on the IWM. That's the way I, I see the, um, the risk on this particular trade. And your profit objective would be down around, you know, 78 or 79, so that's a 4 to 1 risk-reward ratio, which I think is a pretty good uh, parameter to work with. Yeah. Okay. Sounds great, Larry. Well, well, we don't know if it's great or not yet, Lou, but <laughs> yet. This, is what I, this is what I'm looking at. I, I'm still, you know, uh, wondering, you know, why I missed that low of the, uh, you know, the lunar eclipse, but, you know, I miss a lot of things, so no big deal. Anyway, happy holidays to you, my friend, and thank you for Likewise. calling in. Likewise. Bye bye. Okay, bye. Okay, folks. Now I wanted to uh, talk about uh, you know this Treasury bond. Uh, we just completed a, a beautiful uh, butterfly pattern on the hourly chart, and we've also completed a uh, really nice um, Gartley pattern on the longer term daily basis. 
Um, this market has actually, uh, you know, have made, uh, we've had three higher bottoms now uh, coming off of the lows in September. And um, there, each of them it comes in exactly at 61% retracements. And so if this is correct, you know, we, we, we could get one more jab up, you know, on a flight to quality scenario if that's possible. Uh, the low today was an exact. Um, you know, butterfly pattern low. It hit at the, the exact price at 148.20, um, uh, and uh, you know, it, it's so far it's acting okay. I know the Fed's working today, and uh, you know, you have to put a stop in there. And believe me, bonds bonds are really good to trade because they're big. Uh, you know, the, the quantity that they have is huge uh, in a trading, and so you, your stops are usually filled within a tick or two, usually right on the money. Uh, sometimes when you have a Fed, of course, you're not going to you're going to have to give up some. But uh, this is a, you know the nature of the beast. So this is what I'm looking at. Anyway, the T bonds uh, have certainly made a um, you know a perfect pattern, and we we don't know whether it's going to be the one that's going to uh, uh, make the market go uh, lower or higher. I don't know because usually when the market goes up, the bonds go down. But this is uh, this is just something that we're we're looking at as far as a trade. And it looks pretty good, and that would be a, a very equivalent. Would would be the uh, the TBT would be the thing that you'd be wanting to buy if you were uh, looking at that uh, today. Um, you know, I know it's the Fed day and everything, but this is the pattern. That's all I can tell you is the pattern's complete, and it's done what it's supposed to do. It might fail, but uh, right now it's certainly looking like uh, it wants to. Uh, um, you know, work. That's the way it's looking, uh, at least so far. The uh, um, the next uh, um, market that I wanted to cover here is the uh, uh, the price of Apple because uh, I hope I'm not uh, I don't think I'm not I don't think I've done this yet <laughs> if I've no I, I'm pretty sure I haven't I'm I'm under the weather a little bit with the cold but uh, yes I've already done Apple uh, boy this is a bad sign. The old age, when it comes to you folks, it comes really fast, so you've got to be careful and stand out of the way of it. Um, I want to uh, go over the transportation index because I think that's important to take a look at, too, because we are at a spot where we've, we've been at many, many times before, and uh, we are, uh, you know, it's still in a downtrend in the, in the uh, index, and uh, it, it doesn't look, you know, like it wants to break out very much. Um, it. It, it, it made an ABCD pattern down on the uh, solar eclipse day, and uh, then it, you know, has had a little bit of a rally. We rallied up for it. It's been a month now uh, that we've been going on because we went from new moon to new moon, so it's been 28 days, and so that's what we're we're looking at. I, it hasn't really gone very far. It hasn't broken out like the Dow Jones uh, has, or what the people are talking about and everything. And this. You know, I could be 100% wrong on this, that this thing's just getting ready to take off. And I, I do believe this. I, I'll tell you this right now, and I believe it with 100% conviction, is it has nothing to do with the fiscal cliff, believe me. Those are just things that the, the uh, people pick up on the news and, and use them as their, uh, you know, thing that, that, that they, they talk about to get, get people interested in it so they can pay for the advertising. And if you remember when the euro was going through the crisis with Greece, how they were bombarded. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV, as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor. And now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m., and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. 
Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position at Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, 877-927-6684. Um, the uh, the thing that I wanted to uh, mention now is the fact that where we are with the uh, with the uh, uh, Federal Reserve, uh, we just had a uh, some type of a news announcement because when we were on the break, all my alerts went off. Um, I, the uh, market had, had rallied 20, uh, 22 ticks from the buy point that I had, so it, it fulfilled the first part of my price objective on the first unit, but the second unit. Uh, went down uh, very quickly. Um, my stop um, was actually filled within two ticks of the exact uh, price that I wanted to get filled at. So I had to give up sixty-two dollars on that, which isn't very much, you know, considering the you know the volatility, you know, that the Treasury bonds have. So it gives a pretty good idea of uh, you know the volatility that you have in these bonds. Now we've we've come down and we've broken below the seven eight six. Uh, this is either going to be a uh, start of a, a new leg down. Or it will probably come back in to see, uh, you know, what we're looking at. If there's, if you have any questions uh, you want to ask me, it's eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. But anyway, I just wanted to, you know, let you know. In fact, we were talking about that just a little while ago, and that's why I, you know, I knew the Fed was in there going to do something. It could have gone either way. It was a, you know, it was a roll of the dice. Uh, fortunately, we had a nice, you know, profit in it before it finally turned. But uh, and sometimes, you know, from, from those points, they go way up. So you just don't know which ones are going to work, and which ones aren't going to work. So you just have to do one at a time. 
I wanted to uh, do a uh, uh, the stock of Google because uh, I, I think it's in the same situation that Apple is. Only Apple is is far uh, far far um, more bearish than uh, than the Google is. But then I think Google is probably one of the best companies. Uh, I mean, I use their stuff every day with Gmail and, and the other things that they have. And um, this is really a, a terrific uh, uh, stock. But yet, you know, after the bottom, uh, you know, on the solar eclipse on the, the, the 13th of November, you know, the market rallied up uh, only 50%. Now, you stop and think how far the Dow Jones and S&P have come. And, you know, Google here being one of the big companies, uh, just just didn't quite uh, do very well. Amazon was able to go up to the 786 level, but it it, in two, it has not taken out that 786 even during this last during this last big run. So this is something that uh, I think that uh, we have to keep in mind that if these things are going to work, they're going to have to you know get in unison you know to be able to uh, you know to see if they're going to you know work together or not. Now. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about here is to go into the um, uh, look at the uh, gold market because we've had some, you know, real real interesting things happen with the gold market, and um, uh, one of the things that uh, we were looking at uh, over the past uh, oh. Oh, well, we've been watching the higher bottoms in this since way back in May and June, and now we've had uh, you know a perfect seven eight six retracement uh, uh, last week at that seven uh, sixteen uh, uh, eighty level sixteen eighty five level, and now we've rallied up uh, you know to the seventeen fifteen you know up about thirty dollars. It's still not very much, but we're in an uptrend. You know, until we take out that sixteen eighty five, you know, we're in an uptrend. That was a very very powerful bottom because it happened three times. And uh, that tells you there was a lot of people wanting to buy gold at that 1685 level. Uh, they must have had orders setting in there because every time it hit there, you know, it bounced substantially off there. And the last time it, you know, took off and made a pretty good, uh, pretty good move. There's one other thing here that that might be interesting to you folks. Uh, this is something that I, I was doing, uh, you know, last night, um, and I'll just show you. Uh, uh, the, the colors are not going to be the way that I want them to be, but the idea is here, and you'll be able to see it. Those of you into Tiger TV, when we put the gold up here, I'll put it up here that we had the uh, we had a, an ABCD pattern in the gold uh, stopped exactly at the 382, and the reason why I was looking at that is because uh, we were watching that happen with the S and P on the day of the lunar eclipse. When you have these ABCD patterns at a 382. Uh, they can be very, very powerful, and that's, uh, you know, what's happened. And if, you'll, if you can see the action in gold today, you know, it's only moved $12. I mean, $12 in gold is nothing anymore, folks. I mean, it's moving $30, $40 at a time. So $12 after the Fed's in there, you know, doesn't really mean very much at all. In fact, today's low is only a 786 retracement of the low of yesterday. So there's nothing, you know, dramatic in the uh, gold market at all, you know, to uh, to really – you know, to really, uh, you know, match it on. And silver is acting even more bullish. I mean, you know, we've been saying that, that silver has had a chance here because we've had such strong um, support down here at this uh, $32 uh, per ounce level. And uh, it looks like it, silver has got a chance here. You know, if it can get moving, we need it to get above $35 an ounce. But if we get it above $35 an ounce, we could get silver, you know, all the way up to, you know, $40 an ounce. That would be the, you know, the 786 retracement off the highs of April of 2010. So that's what it looks like uh, with the metals. They're actually acting, uh, you know, very, very uh, positive. I mean, they haven't uh, broken down, and uh, that tells us that uh, they want to go higher. That's what it looks like from, from this end of the uh, the technician's corner, I think. So we'll see if that's going to mean anything uh, in the long run or, or not. And um, uh, what else? I'm, I try to write these things down to make sure I cover everything when I go over all of the things. Oh, we need to get into. The, we've had some, uh, you know, some pretty good moves in the. And uh, I'm going to put up a 60-minute chart of the uh, of the currencies because we've covered the euro. Right. In fact, we're we're right there right now. I don't know if this will work, but this is one of the. It's at, but uh, it's trading right at the 786 retracement now. So at this level, you don't have to uh, risk very much. And this is, uh, you know, something that uh, I've been waiting for. That's why my beepers went off. Uh, 
and that tells me that you know the price alerts have been hit, and that gives me an idea of you know what I'm looking at. But we have made a, um, a seven eight six retracement of the high we made uh, back on December the third, and we come down hard, you know, uh, for about uh, oh, 250 pips, and now we're rallying back to the seven eight six retracement, and um, we'll have to uh, you know see how this you know works on a longer term basis, but. You know, th this is a currency member that was supposed to go to zero or almost because everybody was so bearish given the fact that what happened, you know, with the uh, uh, the Greek situation and all of that. And it really has not really done very much at all. You know, it's not any any different than where it was. Uh, oh, I can't even think how long ago it's been. They've been well over. Uh, well, it was February of 2012 when it got up to 34, which was a 382 retracement. And now all we've done is we've matched uh, a 786 retracement of that. So, you know, that's the, the main thing that you're looking at. Uh, someone asked me a question about uh, what would be the, uh, um, um, oh, shuck, let me think, would be the uh, retracement, uh, the, the risk amount that you'd risk on the euro trade here. Well, these numbers are very, very uh, accurate. They either they either work right away or you're, you're out of there. So the most you'd want to risk would be 30 pips, which is equivalent to about $350. So that's the, the amount of uh, the amount of risk that you'd be looking at, and your first profit objective would be three times that. So you have a three to one risk reward ratio on this uh, thing, but you want to focus mainly on the um, the risk part of what you're doing, not the profit part. Remember that winners think how much money. I can lose, and losers think how much money I can win. That's how Las Vegas and Atlantic City and Macau make all their money because they they bring people in on the, the hopes and dreams of you know making a lot of money. But you want to be concerned about how much you're going to risk, and that's how the casinos work. You know they're 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 you know watching and counting, you know every dollar that you're spending all the time, so they know exactly where they stand. You know they know where all the chips are all the time, and that's what you have to do as, as a trader. You have to find out that the trip the the chips are there, and uh, you know that's why you want to be uh, able to do it. Now I, I will talk this a little bit here because I I, I really love this subject, and there's the fact that the relationship, the speculation and gambling, there is no relationship at all, except that they keep score with money in. Um, uh, the uh, in the uh, um, gambling, you, it starts with an event that you have no control over: the, the the flip of a coin, the roll of the dice, the spin of the wheel, the toss of the ball, the blow of the whistle. Once that starts, you don't have any control over the game at all. Whatever you bet, you know they take a percentage off of that, and that's you know pretty much what you're what you're you know going against. Uh, whereas with speculation, you know we decide when we want to trade how much we want to trade, and we can be in a trade as little as a couple of seconds or as long as, uh, you know, four or five months or a year. It doesn't make any difference because this is what we're, this is what we're dealing with. And, and this is all I'm saying is the fact that we have a, a, a spot here uh, in the euro that looks like it might work. I don't know if it will. I'm going to put the beeper in here just to, to uh, in fact, I, was, I just sold it when I uh, was on the air here, so I'll put my beeper in and... Uh, and I probably shouldn't be trading when I'm feeling bad, but I love trading, so what the heck. Came into this world gambling, I might as well. Oh, there it goes. Making the similarities to gambling. That must have been a Freudian slip of some kind. <laughs> okay. Okay, the next uh, the next one we want to look at is the Japanese yen because we've had a big move in the yen. We've been, you know, bullish this for a long time, and uh, we have uh, gone above the... Uh, the old highs by a substantial amount. We broke out above the uh, the old highs, and uh, you know this this market really wants to go higher. Um, this one of those that uh, makes it look like it's uh, uh, it really wants to go up into the you know the low, the high 80s, like 88 to 89, and even higher than that, because uh, the Japanese yen, you know, when it was down around 77, you know, back in September. You know, we were talking about the higher bottoms that were forming, just like we were having in gold. And uh, then we had the big retracement at the 382 level back in November. Uh, that was during the time of the solar eclipse. And now we're, we've backed off and we've made the first objective. Uh, we went sideways for uh, well over two weeks. And uh, we were hoping for it to get down to the 382. It actually missed it by about 40 pips. And now we've turned and it's, uh, you know, moving to the upside. And it certainly looks like it wants to, uh, you know, go higher. Uh, 
Um, so this is the, the the main thing that we're watching with this that Japanese yen. This has been a really good, uh, you know, long term. Well, long well for us it's long term, but it's it's been you know, it's done everything you wanted it to do. So you can't really uh, you can't really uh, fault it for anything. It's certainly held up, you know, relatively well. Now uh, we'll have to take a look at the U.S. dollar here because we're having some pretty good action today because of the the Federal Reserve in here, and uh, we are looking at some. Uh, key support levels that we've uh, touched a little bit, but they haven't really broken badly. We need the uh, we need the uh, dollar index to get below 79.20. It's at 79.74 uh, right now uh, for it to change the uh, scenario, uh, for it to be bearish. But right now, you know, we've uh, we've completed the, the patterns like we thought they were going to complete, and they they still have higher uh, uptrends. Uh, we have lower, um, higher highs, which means we have, um, you know, we're still in an uptrend. We've had higher highs since last October, and and higher lows since last October. So you know, this thing is actually, you know, told you that it wants to go higher. Now it, the question is, if we get below 79.20, that will probably change this scenario. So that's what we'll have to see if that's going to be, uh, if that's going to be the case or not, and then we will see if that is, uh, uh, if that will work. Um, Okay, now um, the next um, the next thing I want to uh, go to is to uh, look at the. Uh, uh, hold on a second, I gotta get the next. Uh, okay, uh, uh, let's see Amazon. Oh, I know what I wanted to cover here. This is important, I think, because. Um, this is the. I'm going to bring in the Dow Jones Industrial Average here because um, th this has had the biggest move of any of these. And uh, the main thing that happened here is that you know we were holding the 618 retracement as of Monday, but because of the action we had on Tuesday, that you know took care of that um, you know move uh, from the, uh, the that we backed off you know just a little bit on the eclipse. Now what's interesting here. Is I'm going to uh, you know give you an idea that you know we have completed that uh, the equivalent of 1340 in the Dow Jones uh, Industrial Average. We've already completed that um, 13. Excuse me, 1440 in the S&P. We've already completed that with the Dow Jones. Now they're different, you know, because the Dow Jones is only 30 stocks, and the uh, uh, the uh, S and P is 500, so there's a you know big difference, and they're they're weighted. They're you know they're weighted with the S and P, whereas with the Dow Jones, they're not. The Dow Jones people are you know that, that's a private, well not private, it's a public company, but they uh, they don't do a very good job of marketing the stuff that they do. They should make the index a little bit more um, re not reliable, but a little more. Um, uh, um, I can't think of the word, but a little more attuned to what's really happening because that's the that's the main thing that uh, you know that I see that that, that they're not doing. And they don't they don't listen to me anyway, so it doesn't really make any difference. We are we're getting really close to the. Um, by the way, the euro trade that I put on is not working. It's out, up against me now by uh, 15 pips, and my my stop is a little above uh, you know 3105. So I'm uh, probably going to get stopped out of that serves me right for trading while I'm under the under the weather. Now we're getting very very close to uh, making the uh, 786 retracement here in the uh, ES. Uh. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I'm going to uh, wind up the show here with the uh, E-mini S&P 500 again because we are really close to completing all of these patterns that we talked about earlier in the show. At the, the 1440 level, we're only two and a half points away, which is, uh, you know, not very much at all. So we will uh, be watching it very, very closely here. Um, the um, If you'll notice, when you take a look at the Tiger TV, you know, we hit that 61% retracement, you know, back on December 3rd, and then we backed off uh, to 1398. It looked like, you know, the scenario that we were uh, looked at was going to work, and then we reversed, and, of course, when we took out that high, at 1424, that told us that we were going to go higher. And now the the price objective on this, the 786 is at 1440. Uh, the ABCD from the uh, lunar eclipse to where we are now, the new moon is, um, if that's new moon to new moon, is uh, coming in uh, at 1440. So we're only uh, two points away on that. And if you do that uh, trade, your risk would be about five points. You'd be uh, selling at 1440, and you'd be out of it at 1445. You don't want to be uh, standing in front of it. These numbers either work right away, you know, or they don't work. And you know, that's uh, the important thing is is when they don't work. When they work, it always everything is great. But when they when they don't work, it's not great. And that's what you have to focus on is you know what what your risk is. That that's why the the people that uh, you know I, I'm not a you know a sports enthusiast. Uh, 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 you know, like a lot of people watch football and stuff, but, you know, football is a game that's based on defense. And, uh, and in fact, basketball is the same way, and, and soccer, too. They're all the same. So this is the main thing that you want to be looking at. 
uh, is the fact that we're right up here uh, at the 1440 level, and um, it's got everything for it. Whether it works or not, we don't know, but that's what it's going to do. Um, you know, so we'll have to uh, just wait and see what happens on tomorrow's show. Tomorrow's show, uh, I'm going to do uh, uh, some things on uh, electronic um, ETNs and ETFs for commodities, and uh, you know, give you some ideas. Uh, you know, what some of these might uh, that that would be looking for. Um, you know, you'd be able to, you know, to trade for yourself. If you don't trade futures, you can use some of these ETNs, and that's uh, the main thing that you would be, uh, you'd be be interested in. In tomorrow's show, we'll cover a lot of stuff. You know, but uh, it's starting to move now uh, in the silver market. It's uh, someone just alerted me that you know silver is making new high on the day, which uh, you know they, these these look like they want to go higher in the metals. There's no question about that. So we'll have to see if in fact this is going to happen. But we won't know until, you know, it's finally over. But it started in the right direction, that's for sure. Um, the um, Okay, the um, main thing, uh, silver has to get above, uh, someone has, uh, silver has to get above $35 an ounce for it to be a, a valid breakout, in my opinion. It needs to, that would be equivalent like what happened when the S&P went over. So that's it, folks. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.